Garibaldi damselfish are California's state fish. Hi, what's going on everybody? My name is Brandon. I'm a marine biologist and an artist, and welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my experiences with aquatic animals with you. It is my goal to raise awareness of our beautiful bodies of water and the creatures that live in them through science, stories, and art. If you are new, welcome. Please stick around to the very end to hear about this month's charity opportunity. Today we're going to be discovering the Garibaldi damselfish. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Hypsipops rubricundus. Wow, that's a hard one. <laughs> are known as Garibaldi damselfish. These fish are quite interesting. They are named after the Italian hero Giuseppe Garibaldi. He was famous for wearing bright red shirts and protecting his land through combat. Funny thing is that this fish is bright orange. So where can we find the Garibaldi damselfish? They are found in the eastern Pacific Ocean from Monterey Bay, California to Guadalupe Island, Baja, California, Mexico. They prefer rocky coastline, rocks, and cobble sea beds, and can sometimes be found along kelp forests. They like water between 0 and 30 meters or 98 feet deep. They spend most of their time in the midwater or benthic, or close to the bottom of the seafloor. All right. Now that we know where to find the Garibaldi, let's discover what they look like and find some behaviors. What are we looking for? We are looking for the largest species of damselfish. They are closely related to the coral reef damselfish. They are bright, almost neon orange. They stand out against the rocks and kelp. They are named after the Italian who wore red, but they are bright orange. Sometimes names don't match what the animals are described as. I will give it a pass since it was named in the 1800s. They grow to 14 inches long with a deep body. Their dorsal and anal fins mirror each other and create lobes that meet at the base of the tail. They have a rounded forked tail. They have lovely long flowing pectoral fins in their mid body behind the gill cover. Garibaldi have a huge body and a tiny face. The body is the shape of a paddle or pizza flat. They are round with little handle tail. Their face looks like it does not belong on their body. Where their body meets their head is a small bump or forehead. They have light yellow to bright yellow eyes high on the head, and they have little lips. These fish have large scales all over their body. I love this fish so much. I had to share it with you. Let's discover some behaviors. The Garibaldi like living near crevices or cave systems. They are very tidy and like creating nests to impress females. During breeding season, they clear their nests of rocks, pests, algae, and plants. If this does not impress the ladies, they swim in circles. That is impressive to a potential mate. If they still do not find a mate after showing a clean nest, swimming the most circular circles they can, they burp at the females to impress them. It isn't really a burp. Divers describe this noise as a loud belch. These Garibaldis almost had me there. I thought they were a bunch of orange Californian gentlemen. They had a tidy place, they swim neat little circles, then whammo! Belching contest. Let's top it all off, they're incredibly territorial. 
They fight off anything that moves close to their nest. They pick up litter. They pull away sea urchins, sea stars, other fish. They even charge and bite divers who get too close. Apparently, the eggs taste good and are a good source of nutrients for other fish. Females are choosy about the males they mate with, but once one female chooses a good male, other females choose that same male to mate with. Sometimes there are lines of females outside of a male's nest. They mix up all their eggs together, then the male chases them away and takes care of the eggs for two to three weeks. He chases the females off so that they don't eat any of the eggs on their way out. Wow, what a bunch of funny fish. Let's transition into the next segment of our adventure. What do these fish eat and how are they doing population wise? These fish eat invertebrates, algae, and sponges. They prefer tube worms, nudibranchs, and bryozoans. When they're in the aquarium, they help clean the tanks by scraping off moss, algae, and trimming plants. So how are they doing? The IUCN Red List has them listed as least concern. This study was conducted in 2010 and needs to be redone. If any young scientists want to study, if any young scientists want a fish to study, this is a cool one. This fish is not part of the commercial fishery. They are used in the aquarium trade. It is illegal to collect wild Garibaldis in California without a permit. These fish are bright balls of orange and are great for kelp tanks and aquariums. If you see one or a few in the wild, go ahead and take a picture. Just be careful when it's breeding season. They fight back. Let's move to our final segment of the episode. What was my personal encounter with the Garibaldi damselfish? I was at the Point Defiance Zoo and Aquarium in their Pacific Seas encounter. This was a large tank filled with Californian fish. I loved how bright and chubby this fish was. As it swam, it wiggled from side to side. It looked so happy swimming with its pectoral fins. It moved through the kelp and all around the exhibit. I loved it. It was so cute. I had to take a picture and figure out what it was for you. I watched this fish for a good seven minutes. Now remember, there are still more fish to watch through the day. <laughs> it can take a long time to go through an aquarium with me. I love finding out that these fish are neat freaks with a wicked temper. They're a bright orange ball of fury, and I love it. I love experiencing new animals for you. They were all created so differently and with unique behavior and looks. I hope you enjoy these episodes. As the final details come into focus, I will call this adventure finished. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, click subscribe and ring the notification bell to be notified when I post new content. I do my best to post new content every other weekend. These videos take a long time to make, and I don't want to rush the process. This month we're going to be helping the Seattle Children's Hospital. They're a wonderful organization helping families of children in the Pacific Northwest area. If you would like to donate, they have many ways that you can donate. You can uh, donate your time, items, clothing, toys, and money. I do my best to help communities and charities that affect my family and myself personally. It's just something that I, it's just a way that I can give back to the community. 
If you would like to help this community, I sell my art in the forms of originals and museum quality prints. My originals run $12 a linear inch and my prints run $6 and $3 a linear inch. $6 for a limited edition. I touch up on the print to make it as close to an original as possible. An unlimited version is the cheapest op option for you. I have a small collection of my art in the Snohomish branch of the Expedia Cruise Ship Centers. Sean, who is the owner, is a wonderful person. He is hosting my art there for a little while. Um, if you want to go see that, please co go in, say hello. They are really nice people and you, they will show you the art and you can talk about a cruise if you would like. I just want you to be able to support this community so that we can continue going on more adventures in the future. Thank you so much for your time. Remember to spread love and curiosity. I've been Brandon, and I'll see you in our next adventure.